bringing the people behind our food to life. We're here today to braise lamb with a rogue hazelnut brown nectar. Lamb is one of my favorite things in the entire world. In fact, some people would probably say I have a lamb problem. And braising is also one of my favorite things to do. So we're using lamb shoulder today and we are going to be using mushrooms and onions and tomatoes and garlic as well as the beer and stock used for the moisture part of this. You can use any kind of mushrooms that you want. If you have um, an area where you have a lot of local mushrooms that are in season, chanterelles are fantastic, morels would be amazing in this. Um, you could use oyster mushrooms, criminy mushrooms, portobellos, they would all be fantastic. And you kind of want everything to be about the same size. So the mushrooms we're gonna do are just quartered because that's gonna be about the same size as the large dice on our onion. So, cut those. Once you have all your mushrooms cut, you can put those back in the bowl and then we're gonna cut up our onion. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how we cut an onion here at the shop. So we're only gonna need half an onion for this. You want to cut your onion in half and peel it. Leave the back on, cause that's gonna hold it together for you while you're cutting it. Now the onion is already in layers, so we don't have to do any of this kind of cutting. But we are going to be cutting it a little bit differently in that we're gonna be cutting it radially, starting with your knife over on this side and then back towards the center. You're gonna have a more uniform cut if you're cutting towards the center than if we're cutting straight up and down because the onion's a globe. So it's also really important that you keep your knife closer to you because then you're not cutting through the back of the onion and you want this part of the knife to hit the cutting board. So it should be making this kind of noise. We rarely do this kind of cutting because this is really hard on your body. Um, you don't have a lot of force behind cutting with the tip of the knife. So curl up your fingers, cut towards the center, towards the center, towards the center, towards the center, back towards the center, and then cut straight up and down. If it starts to splay out a little bit on you, tip it on its side. Make a flat cut for yourself and then continue to cut. And that way you have your perfect diced onion. And that can actually go into the same bowl as your mushrooms. We're gonna cook those together. The last thing that we're gonna do is the garlic. And while we're chopping up the garlic, we're gonna get the pan going so that it's nice and hot for the lamb to go in it because you wanna make sure that you have that um, good heat. We're using grapeseed oil today. You wanna use a high temperature cooking oil when you're sauteing. So we're gonna get this going. A Little bit of oil in the pan. And while that's getting hot, we're gonna cut our garlic. Cut the little woody end off, flat part of your knife, blade away from you, give it a little punch. And that's gonna peel all your garlic. I have seen the two bowl method that you shake, put all your stuff in there. It actually works. So if you have a ton of garlic that you're gonna do, um, you can uh, definitely use that. Make sure you get all your little papers off of the cutting board, work cleanly, that's really important. We're gonna use a little bit of kosher salt. Kosher salt's gonna add a little bit of texture, just like adding sandpaper. Um, and it helps break down the cell walls. The reason we use kosher salt in the kitchen is because kosher salt has a really big grain to it. That allows us to pick it up. Um, it also means that it dissolves faster into your product while you're cooking so that you have the ability to taste and make sure that you have seasoned it properly before you add more salt. Um, and it also means it's less salty by volume than iodized salt. So if you're not familiar with somebody salting with kosher salt, it looks a little scary because we're like adding a ton. All right, so. As much as I like garlic, I don't want to smell like garlic. So I want to prevent this kind of movement. So I'm going to use the knife to actually press the garlic to the cutting board, keep the garlic in place, and clean off my knife at the same time. Once you've got it about there, you can put that in a little container. All right. So. We are going to salt and pepper our lamb. 
and get it into the pan because it's pretty hot. I'm just going to toss that really quickly with my spatula. And then into the pan. Make sure you're using a big enough pan for the product that you have. You don't want to overcrowd the pan and not get enough surface area. It's going to drop the temperature of the pan down and then you're going to end up steaming your product rather than getting that nice caramelized outside look. So we're sauteing this up and getting a nice brown caramelized color on the outside of the lamb. And then we're going to be taking it out of the pan and then adding our mushrooms and our onions. You can do this in a couple of different ways. If you add your mushrooms and onions first before you brown your lamb, it's going to take a long time because those mushrooms are going to have a ton of water to them that's going to pull it out of it. You're going to steam your lamb if you add it in too soon. So you could theoretically add your mushrooms in first, even before your onions, cook those down until they're almost dry in the bottom of the pan and there's not a lot of moisture left, and then you could add your meat and then your onions so you don't overcook your onions. So the alcohol that we're going to be using today is the Rogue Hazelnut Nectar. Um, you can use any kind of liquor that you want. The Hazelnut Nectar is really awesome. Hazelnuts classically go very well with lamb, so it's a great combination. Be very careful if you're cooking with beer. You want to make sure that you have something that's not going to be too bitter. As much as I love hoppy beers, you don't really want to cook with them unless you're going to have a sour component in your dish that's going to offset that bitter note. So porters are really excellent. Stouts are really excellent. This brown ale is a great cooking beer, but you could use red wine if you wanted to. If you didn't want to use wine, you could use all stock. The other stock that we're using for this is lamb stock, which of course we made. If you don't have access to lamb stock, you can use beef stock. You can buy chicken stock at the store. Either one of those is going to be totally fine for this dish. Make sure when you're purchasing stock that you buy a low sodium stock. And especially during a braise, when you're going to have all of this moisture reducing, you want to make sure that you don't end up with a salt lick. So we're going to add our mushrooms and onions now. And we're going to let that cook for a while before we add our stock and pull some of that moisture out of the mushrooms. Some mushrooms are going to take less time if you're using chanterelles or portobellos. They're not going to take as long. Morels don't have as much moisture. Once this is cooked down, then you can add your stock and your tomatoes and your beer. So we're going to add a little bit of our tomatoes, which is also going to add some moisture. Stir that up. And the beer. Another important part about the beer is if you don't like it, don't cook with it. Awesome. If you want more beer than stock, that's OK. little bit of stock. So the braising process, moisture halfway up the sides of the product. So you don't want to cover the product, you just need it halfway up the side of the pan. You're going to make sure that the temperature of this liquid comes up and then you're going to turn it down and you're going to put a lid on it. You can braise on the stovetop, you can braise in an oven, you just want to make sure that the oven is down about 300 degrees, but you're still going to do that searing process first before you put your stuff in the pan and before you stick it in the oven. Now we're going to add a little bit of our garlic. And you can add this earlier as well if you want to saute it up with the mushrooms and the onions. And once we've got that mixed in and our temperature is up, we're going to put the lid on. turn the temperature down. Now if you wanted this after you're done, you want to use some of the brothiness for a sauce or to have it a little bit um, wetter or tighter depending on what you want, take the lid off after you're done cooking it, put it on the stove top and crank the heat up and reduce some of that liquid down and then you'll have your finished product. You can serve it on top of mashed potatoes, couscous, rice, 
just a big pile of it on your plate. It's great. Now that our lamb's been cooking and it's been about 45 minutes, we are ready to serve. Now, depending on what kind of lamb you're cooking or what size meat you're cooking, this might take a little bit longer. If you're doing asabuku or if you're doing shanks, it might take a couple hours. That's what makes braising so awesome. You can put it on the back burner and you can leave it and let it go and have a glass of wine on the couch because this is not going to overcook. It's just going to be moist and tender and perfect. The last thing you want to do is we did salt the lamb beforehand, but I would taste your product and make sure that you've got the correct seasoning that you want for your taste and then put it in your bowl. Lamb braised with hazelnut brown nectar. Sometimes with the first time use of lamb, they can be a little disorganized at first when the lamb comes out, it's like, oh my gosh, what have I done? What is this? But very quickly, especially when we put them together in a small pan called a lambing jug, that bonding develops very quickly. <laughs> 